Good morning from Lille and welcome to our webinar for First Level Controller on how to certify the expenditure in our Interreg Europe monitoring system IOF. I'm Virginia and today I will be your host for uh, this webinar. Uh, we have uh, more than 100 people registered all over Europe uh, participating to this webinar, so thank you for your uh, participation. The webinar will last uh, until 11, so we will have uh, one hour. And uh, as I was saying, we will mm, explain how the first level control model uh, works in IOF and will help you as first level controller uh, to certify the expenditure in, uh, in, in, the, in the system IOF. To do that, we have pre-recorded some video tutorials. Uh, these videos uh, are available on our website, so maybe uh, some of you already had the opportunity to watch them uh, some days ago. Uh, we will focus on uh, four uh, main uh, points the dashboard of the first level control module, uh, the contact details, and then we will see how uh, the summary and the activity summary tabs work. We will, of course, focus on the expenditure and the list of contracts, and then we will finish with uh, uh, the first level control documents, such as the control report, including checklist, the first level control certificate, and of course, we will see in practice how to certify a partner report in IO. So uh, some of you also send uh, the questions uh, they have uh, during the registration, in the registration form. Uh, we will try to reply to these questions through the presentations, but also you will have the possibility to ask questions during the whole duration of the webinar by clicking on the questions tab in your menu on the right side of the screen. Uh, the questions will be answered via the chat, but we will also take some of your questions uh, and we will reply here in the studio. So it means that after each video session, we will stop and we will have a question and answer session uh, with you. Uh, in case project partners or uh, lead partners are also attending the seminar, well, first of all, welcome. Uh, but we would like to remind you that we already had a specific webinar uh, for uh, project partners and lead partner on the partner section in I.O. So today, please consider that we do not have the time needed to reply also to questions for, uh, for this specific section of IOF. Today, this webinar is really for first level controllers and it's focused on the first level control module. Uh, another practical tip, if you want to enlarge your screen to full screen, you can do that by clicking on the top right side of your uh, window. So before uh, starting, uh, I would like to well present uh, also the colleagues that uh, will be with me uh, today uh, in the studios to answer your questions. It will be Alexandra from the finance Hello. team. Hello. And uh, behind the scenes to moderate your questions uh, via the chat, uh, there will be uh, Alexi and Anne Cecile from the finance team. Good morning. Hello. So thank you. Uh, and uh, I think that now we can really start with the first uh, video um, session on the dashboard and the contact details. When you first log into the system, you will be requested to complete your contact details. Let's log in. Um, so you will need to provide all the contact information here um, before you are allowed to proceed further. Um, after you have filled in uh, all the information, uh, you simply click on Save which saves your contact details, but then you always need to remember to click Submit. Your contact details are now saved and submitted, and uh, as you can see, you, the tab My Projects appear. Your contact details page will be your default landing page. To access the projects, um, you simply click on My Projects, and you will access the list the list of the projects for the centralized controllers uh, the list of the projects will contain all the projects from their country for the controllers from the decentralized system the list will contain all the projects 
that the controller is assigned to. You can um, filter the list by call, also search a project by keyword, and uh, to access uh, the project you simply click on a row. After having logged in in I.O. and having selected the project for which you will um, provide a certification, you uh, see the dashboard of the project. In the dashboard of the project, three different widgets are displayed. The project history widget on the left hand side of, uh, of the dashboard is the widget in which you have the list of the application forms that have been submitted uh, or are open. Uh, and also, once uh, a progress report, a joint progress report will be submitted, you will see this information also displayed in this widget. If you need to um, access the application form of the project and you want to download it, you can do it by clicking on the application form. Then this will open for you the application form and here you just need to go to the overview and submit tab of the application form and in the overview and submit tab of the application form you will need to click just on full application form PDF to have the PDF of your application form of the application form of your project. As for the other widgets in the dashboard, the FLC Conta Details widget is the uh, widget in which are listed the Conta Details that have been created. Uh, you can see the different versions of your Conta Details by clicking on the blue triangle. As you can see here, we have two versions. You can also um, create a new version of the content details by this widget by clicking on the uh, button FLC content details. By doing this, you will be redirectly on the um, FLC content detail page, which is the page that is displayed by default once you enter uh, the system. Under the FLC content details widgets, you can see the FLC checks. In this widget, you have uh, the um, the list of uh, partner reports for which uh, you as FLC are responsible for control. As you can see, uh, the number of, uh, of the partner to which the partner report belongs to is indicated. Also, it is indicated the reporting period for which the partner report needs to be certified and if this partner report has been or not been included in the joint progress report. It's also useful for you to have a look at the status column. Here it's indicated that the control work started and in case you certified the partner report, then this status will change. And also also, if you will reject the partner report of your project partner, then this status will change. So the status uh, gives you the information on the on the um, on the status of your work. And then we have also this column, which indicates you um, the the person uh, who did the last change in the partner report. So welcome back to the studios. Um, we hope that this first video on the um, dashboard, the first level uh, control module dashboard and the content details was useful. We receive uh, uh, for this uh, specific uh, um, session already some questions during the, the registration. So we will uh, give priority to these questions first of all, and then we will we'll reply to the other questions. Uh, a thing that I would like to highlight before uh, uh, answering all the questions is that this webinar uh, will be recorded and will be made available for you on our website. So in case you need to uh, leave earlier today or you want just to rewatch this, uh, well, this webinar will be available with this recording on our website. And um, let's uh, start uh, with the question. So Alessandra is here with me. Uh, Jonathan is asking uh, as first level controller, he logged in in, uh, in I.O., but he cannot see uh, any projects uh, in uh, his dashboard. Why? Okay, so uh, Jonathan is probably uh, the 
a decentralized controller because for centralized controllers, the moment you have your account, you log in, you see all the projects from uh, your country. Uh, for decentralized controllers, the moment they log in, uh, they should see the projects that they are assigned to. If, uh, the, um, if this is not the case, um, this means that uh, either the approbation body didn't assign this project partner to the controller, or this means that uh, the approbation body assigned this controller, but uh, the controller didn't activate uh, the assignment. Normally, when your account is created and your assignments are made, you receive two emails. One with the creation of your account, where you have to click um, the link that is inside to activate your account, and the other email contains a link on which you have to click to activate the assignments. So check uh, your spam folder also in case you didn't receive these emails. And uh, if you don't really don't see them in your mailbox, please contact the approbation body so that they can uh, fix it. Because they can, even if they have already assigned you, they can resend the assignment. And the moment you activate them, you will be able to um, see the projects and the partners uh, that you are assigned to. Okay, thank you, uh, Alexandra. Uh, also, we receive a, a question from Okan that is asking uh, what the unload button is used for. Uh, well, the unload button is uh, simply the button uh, with, that you use to go out of the project. Uh, you will see that the moment you click on it, uh, the project acronym and index will disappear from the top of your page, and this means that you are out of the project. Okay, so this will uh, be very easy. Uh, we also receive a question from Mar Marius, uh, who uh, is wondering uh, if uh, in the Excel file extracted from IOF, uh, the column item number as planning in the application form uh, is, uh, is visible, but this column is not visible uh, in, the, in the web version. Uh, so, uh, is asking, uh, will this column, the item number as planned in the application form, will be visible in IOF web version? We will uh, see how uh, the, um, uh, this section, meaning the list of expenditure, looks like for the for server controller in the next video, but already we can answer this. Uh, you will not be able to see the application, uh, the item in the application form. This is for information for the partner so that they can uh, um, select this and um, this is for the external expertise and equipment budget lines uh, because this is to help later on the lead partner uh, to aggregate uh, the expenditure uh, in the joint progress report. Uh, this is not, we deemed it not necessary for the first level controllers, so uh, this will not, this information will not be available for first level controllers in the system. However, uh, first level controllers can download the application form oh, from, the, from the system and in this way, yes, of course, yes. Yeah. As we were uh, showing in the, in the video, it's possible to download the application form, and so from the application form you can actually see the numbers of, uh, of the item. Yes, if necessary, all the application form, the entire application form is available for the controllers in the system. Okay, so thank you very much, and uh, I think that uh, we do not receive uh, any other uh, specific question on the dashboard and uh, on the contact details, so we can move on to the second uh, session of our uh, webinar on the summary and the activity summary tabs. To enter a part in a report, you just need to click on the on on it uh, from the FLC checks widget. So once you click on it, the partner report opens for you, and uh, as you can see, uh, several tabs uh, are displayed uh, which uh, compose the the partner report. Let's start from the first tab, the summary tab. In this tab, you have indeed the summary of uh, the partner report. As you can see, uh, it's indicated the, the project title of the project, uh, the index of the project, uh, the name of the partner, the, the number of the partner, and the reporting period, start date, and the end uh, of the reporting period. Also, you can find 
here the information about uh, the inclusion of this partner report in the joint progress report and once you certify uh, the partner report in the summary tab it will be also displayed this information. On the top of the summary tab uh, two buttons uh, are available for you. The request changes button allows you to send back to the partner uh, the partner report in case changes are needed and uh, the certifying report button it's the button that you should use when you want to certify the report meaning when everything uh, is corrected and the partner report can be certified by this button you can do it. For FLCs coming from uh, centralized first level control uh, countries, another button is provided under uh, the summary tab. This is the mark report uh, button. Through this button, uh, the FLC uh, can um, already uh, select the partner report uh, uh, on which uh, he or she will uh, work on and by clicking mark report uh, the name of the first level controller will be displayed in the bottom line in the summary tab. This is also useful for other first level controller of the same country uh, which can see in this way uh, that uh, a first level controller is already working on the partner report. The use of the mark report button is not obligatory. Close to the summary tab there is the activities summary tab. In this tab you can find the information provided by the project partner on the activities carried out during the reporting uh, period. Uh, this information can be helpful for you in order uh, to check that the costs reported are in line with the activities. Uh, please note that in case uh, the partner uh, has already provided you uh, this information outside the system, this tab uh, can also be uh, completed just with NA or partially completed. The content details tab is the tab in which you have listed here um, the partner contact details and also your contact details. You can uh, update if needed your uh, contact details by clicking on the um, drop down list on the right hand side of the FLC contact details uh, section. Uh, here you will see that uh, all the versions that have been created and submitted through the uh, FLC contact details widget are listed. So in order to update and use uh, the versions listed here, you just need to select them, uh, the one that you want, and then save. Now you have updated the FLC contact details also in the partner report. So welcome back to the studios uh, again. Uh, we received some questions uh, on these uh, uh, summary and activity summary tabs. So let's see the first uh, questions received during the registration by um, Peter. Uh, Peter is asking uh, how uh, can a first level controller reject the partner report in case of correction in I.O. So uh, there is this possibility uh, to reject um, the report of the partner um, in case, but we, well, we recommend to do this in case the partner report, the quality of the partner report is really poor if there's some uh, missing information, uh, missing documents, um, and because of this you are unable to do the check of the report. Uh, in case there are corrections, there is a possibility, of course, for you to record the corrections uh, in the report, uh, in the report itself, and then in the to mark them in the checklist and then in the control report, there is uh, this button. Um, I think it's called Request uh, Changes, and by clicking on it, you send the report back to the partner, and the partner has to work on it and submit it back to you for certification. Yeah. 
Thank you, uh, Alexandra. Also, we received a question from Oaken, uh, which uh, is wondering what, uh, what is used for the mark uh, button uh, for a first-level controller coming from a centralized uh, first-level control country. So, uh, the mark button is only visible for, uh, as Virginia said, only, uh, it, it's only there for the centralized uh, controllers. Uh, it is uh, we created it because the centralized controllers have access uh, to all the partner uh, reports from their country. So this is just a tool that we made available. You are not obliged to use it. But the moment the controller starts working on the report, they can mark it. And then uh, in the dashboard of the report, you can see that this report has been selected by the controller. So this is a sign for other controllers that somebody else is working on it. Of course, other controllers can also work on it. The, um, it's, uh, it's not blocked. It's just a tool for you uh, to, to make it more visible uh, that somebody else is working on the project. Yeah, thank you, Alexandra. Related to this, we have just received also a question from Marius, which is, which is asking if this mark report is valid only for one reporting period or it's uh, uh, valid for the whole duration of the project, for all the certifications. It's valid only for this particular report. Okay, thank you. Uh, and also, uh, we receive a question from Bosnia uh, re uh, related to the uh, summary activity tab. Should uh, the project partner indicate uh, the information in this tab in uh, English or in the national language? Uh, this tab, we made it available um, to make it for the partners so that they can fill it uh, and provide information for you, uh, for the controllers. So, it, of course, it, it can be filled in in the national language. It can be filled in uh, with uh, the information that you request for partners. If you exchange with a partner outside of the system, it is not necessarily uh, necessary to fill in this section even. The partner simply should put their information provided to the controller outside of the system. This is really a tool that we uh, provided for you. You can use it or not. Uh, just to have some information on partner activities to make it easier for you to check the expenditure. Okay, and when it comes to the button certify the report, is this button uh, um, to be used by the main first level controller or also by a first level controller which is not the main one? This question is asked uh, by, um, uh, sorry, uh, Christos. So, the button certify the report is supposed to be used by the controller who wants to certify the report. In case you are not entitled to, uh, uh, you shouldn't do it, but this also could be handled by at the level of uh, the approbation body or the main first level controller who uh, are able to limit controllers' ability to certify. So, certain controllers might have the role that will make it uh, possible for them to read and write in the report but not to certify and certain controllers can have the right uh, to read the report, write in it and certify. So it depends on how it works in your institution. So this is something that should be agreed internally and yes. then the person that is responsible for this will click the button. And also, is it possible, this question is asked by George, is it possible to certify uh, a partner report in this uh, reporting period and then let another first level controller to certify uh, the next uh, partner report? In the next, in period. next reporting period? Yes, yes, of course. Um, it also all depends on uh, how the system is organized in your country. If this is a decentralized system, the moment only the controllers that are assigned to this partner can see it and can certify the report. If this is a centralized system, all controllers uh, from the system see uh, the report and then it depends on how it is organized in your country. Uh, this, is, um, this is really decided internally by you, how you use the system. Yeah, and we also uh, receive a, a question from Jose. Uh, it's still related to uh, what we have already discussed, the request change button. Uh, in which cases uh, which, um, a first level controller to, should send back the partner report to the project mm. partner? As I said, this, uh, this button is used 
should be used in case the uh, part report is of a very poor quality and you are unable to do your work because you haven't received the documents or the report has been filled in such a way that you don't understand anything and you simply don't even want to start your work because this would be a waste of time. This moment you send it back to the partner and ask them to correct and submit a quality report so that you can do your job uh, properly. However, if the, um, the quality of the partner report is not that poor, is it possible to um, ask the partner to uh, make some correction by itself? This is the question asked by Kai. But depending which corrections, because if you see an error by a partner, uh, for instance, a miscalculation, this should be recorded as an FLC correction in the uh, list of expenditures. So this is really... Um, your corrections, the one, the mistakes that you spot should be recorded. Uh, um, these request changes should be only used uh, for the reports that uh, are uh, of poor quality and are unable to be uh, properly checked um, by the controller. Because uh, just so you know, these corrections we we. You can see later on, uh, we will discuss it in the list of expenditure. There is a list of corrections. You, If you were checking the reports of uh, the first scope projects before you have already seen it, there are some reasons for correction. They are standardized and uh, we draw statistics from them. So this is also important for us to know what errors are spotted by controllers. Uh, um, this is why for these kind of errors, uh, they should be recorded in the list of expenditure uh, instead of uh, um, you asking the partners to correct them outside of the system. Okay, thank you very much for the, this detailed answer, Alexander. I think that we can move on to the third section of uh, our webinar related to the list of expenditure and the list of contracts, and then we will uh, discuss all these questions. In the list of contracts are listed all the contracts used uh, for the implementation of the project by the project partner for which a contractual agreement exists. The list of contracts is a useful tool provided to follow up on public procurement throughout the implementation of the project. Uh, this tab can also be useful for you to fill in section 5 of the first level control checklist. In case you have comments on the contracts listed in this tab, you can uh, insert them in the comment box provided. In the expenditure tab, uh, you will see a um, summary table with um, totals per each budget line. You will see the previously reported amounts uh, if there was a previous uh, report. You will see what the par partner has currently reported and the moment you certify the amounts, you will see also uh, the amounts appearing in the certified amount column. Below uh, the list of expenditure, you can see also the table uh, partner expenditure breakdown per source of funding. Um, you can see the amount declared by the partner and if you notice that the partner contribution was uh, incorrectly indicated by the partner, you will be able to correct it also. You see that there's this white field that this will be open for editing. Um, the moment you start certifying the expenditure, uh, the amounts will start appearing also here. This will be an automatic calculation. Uh, from this page, you can also export the list of expenditure to Excel by clicking on this button. And uh, to access the details per each budget line, you simply click on, the, on each uh, row of the list of expenditure table. Um, let's see uh, an example of the budget line. Uh, let's click on staff costs. The detailed section for each budget line looks uh, looks more or less uh, the same for each budget line. So you will have a column indicating the budget line, um, the employee or supplier, the description, the reference number of the document. Uh, so you will see uh, all the details that were filled in by the partner. You will have the possibility to update the information provided by the partner. If you notice a mistake, you can see that, for instance, um, the 
employee, supplier field or the description field uh, are in white, which means that you can change uh, this information if you notice a mistake or you can add some information. What you will not be able to uh, correct um, is the information on the expenditure that is provided by the partner. So you will not be able to change the currency um, the, and the amount declared by the partner. Uh, in order to change uh, this information, if you notice that there has to be a correction, you have your dedicated column, total amount certified by the FLC, where you will enter uh, the amount that you certify. So this is how you uh, correct the amount provided by the partner. In case your the total amount certified by the FLC differs from the total amount declared by the partner, um, you will have to indicate uh, the um, to which uh, correction reason uh, the error is uh, the, 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 the error is related to. Uh, also, uh, something worth noting is the fact that the currency uh, and the exchange rate are automatically calculated. Uh, this will be uh, the system that will calculate uh, this exchange rate. It will be based on the uh, commission exchange rate uh, from the month um, where the partner will submit the report to you. Um, one important thing um, to also notice um, is that uh, sometimes a partner might make a mistake in the budget line and uh, we know that sometimes the controllers were correcting this themselves so this is possible also to do this uh, you see that the budget line uh, field is also editable when you click on it uh, you can change the budget line, for instance, now we are in staff costs, but uh, if we notice that uh, this uh, isn't actually an employee, it's uh, uh, an external consultant, we can change the budget line, save, and the expenditure will disappear from the staff cost budget line and it will appear automatically in external expertise and services budget line. Let's take a look there. We are now in uh, external expertise and services budget line uh, and you can see that the item that we moved from the staff cost budget line appears now at the end of the list here. You might have also noticed an additional column that appears here, uh, the contract number column. Uh, it doesn't appear in staff cost budget line, it appears in travel and accommodation, e uh, external expertise and services and equipment budget lines and this is the column where the partner can indicate um, the contract uh, that the uh, expenditure item relates to. So this will be the contract listed in the list of contracts uh, by the partner. By clicking on the check button you will see um, all the fields that still require your attention uh, where you need to fill in or correct some data. After you have filled uh, all the sections of the list of expenditure and all the required fields are completed, you will see a green check sign next to each budget line. You will also see the certified amount totals per budget line and the total certified amount. So welcome back once again. Uh, we receive a lot of questions during this video session on list of expenditure and list of contracts. This is normal, mm -hmm. uh, but we would like also to clarify uh, one point of this webinar. Of course, we are here to uh, try to explain how the first level control module works, meaning the technicality of this module and how the system works uh, for you to certify the expenditure. We do not have the time today to reply to all, these, all the questions we received that are about the eligibility 
of the expenditure. So please take into account that we are here to reply questions on how YOF works, but not on the eligibility of expenditure that uh, the project partner will report through YOF. Uh, let's try, however, to uh, to do our best to reply to the some of the questions uh, we have received. Uh, we uh, received some questions from Julian about uh, uh, a pro uh, probably a bug that we have in the system. Uh, is there a reason why uh, the uh, amount certified uh, indicated in the control report uh, is not the same as the amount certified in the expenditure tab? Yes, uh, there is a reason and it is a bug. Um, we, that has been reported to us uh, by uh, some of our lead partners. So the system doesn't take into account the administration costs in uh, the report, uh, in the control report. This, is, uh, this bug has uh, already been fixed on our test system and we will deploy the fix soon. So in case you notice it, uh, uh, please inform your partner so that they could get in contact with their lead partner. Uh, who will uh, in turn report all these kind of problems to us and then we will manage to inform the lead partner about uh, when, the, when, the, when the bug is solved. The moment, uh, uh, at this moment you will be able to uh, finalize the, the, the check of your report because the numbers uh, will be fixed. So please, uh, we apologize for this error, please, um, uh, please be patient, we are uh, working on solving it and soon it will uh, this this bug will disappear from the system yeah and also we received uh, a lot of questions about the exchange rate uh, in the in the partner report so let's make that uh, the partner uh, submit uh, the partner report in April to the first level controller the first level controller works on the partner report and uh, uh, request some changes to the partner in May what is the exchange rate to be used and how to deal with the exchange rate in the partner report so you have noticed already that uh, the exchange rate is calculated automatically in the system so it will always be the exchange rate from the month in which the partner submitted the report to the controller. So if the partner submits the report in uh, April, it will be the exchange rate in April. If the controller then sends the report back to the partner and the partner resubmits in May, the exchange rate will be recalculated with the exchange rate valid in May. Yes, thank you, Alexandra. This is a question that is uh, quite uh, recurrent. Uh, and uh, we also receive an interesting question from Bosnia, uh, which is asking, so in the list of contract, contracts, a project partner should list uh, all the contracts used for the implementation of the project that are below uh, the European threshold or just the contracts that are above the European threshold? Let's clarify this. So the partner is supposed to list all the contracts that are used for the implementation of the project. Uh, so all the contracts below and above. Uh, this distinction, we introduce this distinction because then when the partner ticks the contract as above the EU threshold, this contract is then transferred to the joint progress report um, because we don't need to see uh, the contracts below the EU threshold. The contracts be below the EU threshold uh, this list is made available for you to make your life easier just to see that there are these contracts and uh, maybe the, uh, pr the procedure uh, of uh, how these contracts were uh, attributed uh, is supposed to be uh, checked by you. Yes, thank you. And also uh, we receive a question from uh, Christos uh, who is wondering uh, if the partner, partner uh, has the access to the uh, correction made uh, by the FLC while the FLC is working on the partner report. Uh, no, um, so the moment, the, when the partner works on the report, nobody can access the report except the partner. And this is the same for the for the controllers. When the controllers are working on the report, the partner doesn't see the report only if the controller then if there is this necessity uh, to send the report back to the partner um, or if the controller certifies the moment the controller certifies the report it is sent back to the partner and this moment the partner will see all the corrections made by the controller 
Yes, thank you. So we will uh, have uh, the time for uh, some last uh, questions. Uh, one question that we um, uh, received during the uh, registration was about the financial correction, mm -hmm. uh, how to deal with financial correction in the partner report. So there is this option to include financial corrections. Uh, so the it can be done both either by partner or uh, by the controller if the partner hasn't done it. So it depends on what, uh, when the, the need for the correction is detected, it's, uh, it's possible to do it both ways. So uh, in uh, the expenditure step, there is this um, um, tick box. And the moment this uh, tick box is ticked uh, and saved, um, there is this t the text next to the tick, bo tick box, if I remember correctly, is um, in case of uh, corrections needed in previous yes, report, report, please tick the box. And the moment the box is ticked and saved, there is the financial correction tab that opens. And it's, uh, it's possible to, uh, this, this correction tab can be filled by the partner or by the controller. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, uh, um, Alexandra. I think that we need to move on to the uh, next uh, video session on the first level control documents and to see how the first level controller can certify the expenditure in IO. To enter the FLC checklist tab, you just need to click on it and once uh, you do it, uh, all the questions of the FLC checklist are displayed and reply to all the questions. Please note that if you uh, reply no or NA to a question that you need to provide further explanation in the comment box that it's provided for each question. Uh, also, for what concerns the budget lines, um, it's important to highlight that um, if no costs were uh, reported by a partner uh, under a specific budget line, you can tick the box if no costs under this budget line are included in the report and all the questions related to this budget line will be collapsed and so you don't need to reply to these questions. Um, it's important also to mention that it's possible for you to download the FLC checklist as a PDF through the button FLC checklist. Clicking on this button, you will have the PDF of the checklist. Please be aware that uh, if you uh, request changes uh, in a partner report uh, from a project partner and uh, you have filled the checklist, then in the revised version of the partner report that the project partner will send you back, you will need to fill again the FLC checklist. To enter the FLC report, you just need to click on the FLC report tab and this will uh, open for you the FLC report. As you can see, uh, the FLC uh, report uh, is composed by several sections. Uh, the first three sections, project and progress report, project partner and designated first level controller, are section automatically uh, filled in meaning that the information here is automatically transferred on the basis of uh, uh, what you have indicated in or your project partner has indicated in the um, different tabs of the partner report. In the fourth section of uh, the partner report, also you will have uh, as automatically transferred from the expenditure tab uh, the amount declared to the controller and the amount that you have certified. Uh, you will be, however, asked to uh, indicate uh, how much of the partner expenditure has been verified. Uh, if a sampling methodology has been used, uh, this should be described in the provided um, text box. Uh, we ask you also to indicate as, uh, if uh, the verification was done on a test base, on the spot or in other ways. Uh, and in case of on-the-spot verification, uh, you should indicate the start date of the verification, the place and the amount verified on the spot and the amount certified on the spot and also um, the format in which the documents were made available. Uh, the other sections, section 5, 6, 
7 and 8 um, are sections in which uh, a free text box is provided uh, to uh, describe the follow-up measures from the previous uh, report. As you can see, the description of funding, observation and reservation, uh, any conclusion and recommendation, and also the follow-up measures for the next progress report. From the FLC report tab, you can download the FLC report and the FLC certificate. Please note that these documents are downloadable for you for documentation purpose, but uh, these documents do not need to be uploaded uh, in the system and uh, sent to the program. Uh, for what concerns the report on fraud, uh, this is our report that can be downloaded uh, by you in case uh, uh, during the verification uh, you found evidence or you uh, became aware of suspected or established case of fraud. And in this case, uh, you can send the report on fraud to the program outside uh, IO. The moment you have uh, correctly filled in all the sections, you will see it because all the tabs will be marked with a green check sign. Um, from then on, the button in the summary tab, uh, the certify report, uh, will become active and by clicking on it, you will be able to, to certify the report um, that you have just checked. After you have clicked on Certify Report, you will receive an email uh, notification indicating uh, the name of the partner and the project and the report that you have just certified. To confirm and finalize the certification, you will need to click on the link contained in the email. This will finalize the certification for the partner and send a notification uh, to the partner informing them that their report has just been certified by you. Welcome back once again uh, after this uh, last video session. Um, we uh, can start with the questions we, uh, we received. Um, even uh, sent has a question about uh, the, the possibility for the first level controller to uh, change the amount uh, uh, declared on an item by a project partner. How does it work? So the moment, let's make it more general, the moment you enter uh, the uh, list of expenditure by the partner, you will see that certain fields are editable, like description or um, the payment date or document reference number, and you can change them. If you notice that the partner made a mistake there, you can change them. There's no need to ask the partner to do this. There are certain fields that are blocked, and they are the amounts that have been declared by the partner it's clear that you cannot uh, correct them because they have been declared by the partner. In case you notice a mistake, you record it by uh, entering the amount certified by the first level controller. You have your dedicated column uh, where you have to always type your, uh, the, the, the amount that you certify. Each time for each item you have to type the amount. In case the amount is different, meaning uh, different from the declared amount, meaning that you have detected some error, there is always, uh, there's this next column next to it, um, error related to, and there's this predefined list that I already mentioned from where you can select the, uh, the, the error that, uh, that corresponds uh, to the situation. And related to this also, Bosnian is asking, is it possible to provide more explanation on the reason of some errors in the control report in section uh, 6 uh, findings? Of course, uh, you can always uh, detail if you have some more comments, uh, because you will notice that in the list of expenditure itself, you don't have the column for comments. It's because the comments should be provided in the checklist or uh, in the first level control report. 
Thank you, uh, Alexander. Uh, uh, I think that uh, we can uh, take uh, just one more question and then we, we will need to close uh, our webinar. Um, T Tiberio is asking, is it possible to, um, to suspend an expenditure if during the verification uh, he encounters some, uh, some, some problems and uh, there is the exchange with uh, the, the partner that takes time? Uh, I don't know what you mean by suspend. I assume that you mean to keep it and in the report, kind of, but not to certify it. We don't foresee such a possibility. So either you certify it or you don't, um, meaning um, the partner would have to re-include it at uh, the later stage. Okay, so thank you very much, Alexandra, for all uh, uh, the questions uh, and the answers that you have uh, given to uh, to us. Uh, we hope that this uh, uh, webinar uh, was useful for you. Uh, before saying goodbye, uh, we would like to share some messages. Uh, so first of all, the record of this uh, webinar, uh, along with uh, all the uh, the videos, the tutorial videos that we watched together today, are uh, available on our website uh, and. Uh, um, this is uh, the link to our uh, website page uh, in which you can find uh, the videos and uh, the webinar. Again, today the webinar was mainly for explain how the first level control module uh, uh, works, so all the questions on the eligibility could not be answered in the, in the given time. In case you still have some questions related to the, uh, the system, how the first level control module and this question have not been uh, answered during the webinar, you can uh, send uh, your questions to the email address projects at interregeurope.eu. And uh, uh, also another important thing to remember is of course that if you want to work in IOLF you need to, vet, to have access to IOLF. So if you still don't have access to uh, IOLF and you, are a, and you are a first level controller from a decentralized first level control country, please contact your approbation body, while if you are a first level controller from a centralized first level control country, please get in contact with the main FLC who will create uh, the, uh, the account for you. Um, double check always that the um, amounts certified in the expenditure and the list of contracts tab are uh, um, corresponding to uh, the amounts indicated in the control report and the first level control certificate. If this is not the case, then uh, it can be also related to a bug, so get in contact to the, with the lead partner of the, of the project so that uh, uh, he or she can get back to us and we will try to see if there is any problem also on our side, but double check this and please remember that all supporting documents such as uh, uh, invoices, uh, public procurement documents, uh, employment contracts, all these documents need to be sent to you by your project partners outside the system because we don't have the server capacity to, uh, to um, also upload uh, this, uh, this document. Um, so um, now I think that we can really uh, close uh, our, uh, our webinar. Uh, at the closure you will see that uh, up evaluation questionnaire will pop up. Uh, we kindly ask you to take the time to, re to reply to the few questions that we have prepared in order to know how we can improve this uh, uh, kind of service and uh, uh, get, your, uh, get your feedback. So, so thank you once again for your uh, participation. Uh, have a good day. Goodbye.